I had one of the most intense times in my prayer room this afternoon. Undone. I cried so hard. My deep cried out. cry from a <clears throat> sorry from a place of burning just I pray that I pray that everything that that I have in my heart I can get out Because I feel like it's burning me and I need it to burn you. I'm so serious. I think it was Charles Wesley that said I set myself on fire so the whole world can watch me burn. I think it was Wesley. He did a pretty good job of that. <clears throat> if you read the end of the book, we win. was reading in the in the book of revelation today so my heart was so worked just the truth i noticed that the bible that jesus he says to he who overcomes he doesn't say to he who's overcome need help right now. I had a pretty intense time this morning at service. It was, it was uh, I love him. Nothing has the right to interfere with that. Opinions of people don't have the right to interfere with my love for him. <laughs> and life doesn't have the right to interfere with his love for me. Time's running out. choose whose team you're on. <clears throat> I don't know when. <sighs> Jesus came as a lamb. He's not coming back that way. led like a sheep to the slaughter was silent he wasn't silent headed to the cross so that you could be silent now that you're carrying one what America needs right now is a voice the church, the church has lost her voice I'm 
trying not to go down that road that I was this morning. I'm trying not to. But the more I hear kids, the more I, I can't, I can't be quiet. America if they would vote for Hitler <clears throat> if I asked America if they would vote for Hitler a very small percentage might because they're filled with hatred And even some might because they're confused. So many Jews were killed by him because he thought that he was doing the country a favor. Millions, millions exterminated silenced, gas chambered, shot, killed, brutality, more horrible than we realize, more horrible than history books can tell us. If I asked you to vote for him, now that you know what he was capable of, you would absolutely say no way. No way, that would be ridiculous. If I, if I asked you if he would be a good leader for our country, you, you would say no way, no possible way. Way more, way more babies have been murdered through abortion than the Jews that were exterminated by Hitler. Yet for some reason, Christians, I mean Christians, it would be crazy to vote for Hitler, but the world, it would be crazy to vote for Hitler too. We've become so upside down, inside out, <clears throat> confused which way is up, which what is real, what is truth. That we would dare cast our ballot for the devil. strong words the Lord said it to me on election day he said tell people not to vote for the devil I said Lord the devil's not running for office and my war is not against flesh and blood he said anybody that would condone the murder of unborn children is a devil. People say, you be careful. You be careful, man. You might lose 
whatever. We have served the church of Laodicea for long enough. We have worshipped a God that we don't know for long enough. My Bible speaks better things. We don't serve a God that's mute, that can't speak, that can't hear, and that can't see. I don't know. I don't know what you think, what you think about Jesus. We have preached to God his love for such a long time that we've lost the reality of the severity of our King. I'm trying to be really careful right now because I want to freak out. No, but I have to make, I have to make sense, see? Because I have to teach. Now is not the time to live in compromise. <clears throat> I said it this morning, I said, I'm going to lose people today, I guess tonight too. For some of you, you'll never be back again. And you can go somewhere else that's comfortable. And I'm okay with that. But when, but when, when you stand before the Lord, your comfort is over. intensity of God's love for us needs to be known. Something needs to change. I said, God, use me. Use my voice. Use my platform. Anything, anything, God, anything. You tell me and I'll do it. The word of God says that God put on Gideon like a glove. He clothed himself with Gideon. I need God. I need God to intensify my fire for him in such a way. I need people to be cut by the truth. America needs hope. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. And right now, we have so many whose hope is deferred. People are like, Todd, why didn't you speak up about political stuff? Why, why don't you use your platform for, to, to, to speak up about politics? My Bible says that Jesus will never lose the throne. <laughs> Decisions that we make as a nation will either hurry his return or extend our time. The Bible doesn't say that things get better. Sooner or later, things are going to get way worse. Let's not prophesy doom and gloom. That's the truth of the word. I'm just 
just gonna read a couple of things. <laughs> the church in Laodicea. I just wanna read a couple of things. You guys okay? I won't be long. I'm so serious. My wife and my kids, they know I'm not playing with this thing. I would rather be dead than compromise this truth. We have become too comfortable. Revival doesn't come when things are comfortable. We pray for revival, we pray for it. Revival doesn't come in comfort, it comes in great mayhem. If the decision that was made sticks, it's on us now. We're like, no, no, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm not kidding. People think they're clicking their heels. There's no place like home. If you're clicking your heels saying that, you haven't become his home. This is not a great message to build the tithe. <laughs> I promise, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for Jesus. All I want to be is a match. That's it. One that starts fires. I will be a Christian arsonist. I will. I'm hungry for Jesus says to Laodicea in Revelation 3. Let me set the stage. Let me explain just a couple of things before we do this. I shared it this morning. John the Beloved. John the Beloved. The Gospel of John. That John. First John, second John, third John, that John. John, the one that wrote the book of Revelation. These disciples lived sold out lives. Sold out. So sold out that all of them were martyred, except for John. All of them. Disciples were pulled, their arms pulled, their legs pulled by horses in all directions. They were filleted, all their skin peeled from their body. Way worse stuff, things that would make your mind so sad. These guys were soldiers, man. John was boiled alive. They tried to kill him. They boiled him. Has any of you ever burned your hand with oil? Have you ever gotten a spatter on you? Do you feel what that feels like? Can you imagine being dipped slowly in oil? Toes, ankles, legs, knees, groin, stomach, chest, face and he wouldn't die. And it was real oil, it wasn't fig oil. He couldn't die. Not that way. God had something for him. John's banished to an isle called Patmos. It was the banishment island for the worst criminals. He sent there. John was faithful and preached the gospel. John had an intimate relationship 
with Jesus. He was the one that knew that he was the disciple that Jesus loved. This is John, this is the one. He's the one that laid his chest upon the head of Jesus. He's the one. So he's on this island, the Lord appeared to him. Now watch, John used to love Jesus consistent. John is this disciple that is years and years and years and years and years and years later, decades and decades later, he has faithfully served him. He has an intimate relationship with Jesus that none of us, I want it, none of us have stepped into. An intensity, watch. This John that knew Jesus in the book of Revelation when it starts, it says that he saw Jesus. It says he saw his clothing, his sash, his feet as burnished bronze. He said he saw his hair as white as wool, whiter than snow. He saw his eyes a flame of fire. And words were uttered and John didn't go, oh Lord, it's so good to see you. You know what John did? He fell as a dead man. This one that knew Jesus, that had intimacy, that had relationship with Jesus, he fell as a dead man at his feet. Now John lived a holy life, a burning life, a life that was out of this world. It wasn't of the world, it was in the world, but not of it. He lived a life separated for the purpose of the gospel. He's banished to an island because of the gospel and because of the testimony of Jesus. That's why he's there. John lived that. And when he saw Jesus, he, having lived that way, fell, it is, fell as a dead man. What do you think your encounter with Jesus is gonna be like? I'm talking about somebody that's sold out, fully surrendered, fully burning for God their whole life, preaching, fully going after God, fell as a dead man before Jesus' feet. Fell. <gasps> Boom. Like dead. Dead means passed out cold. Fear. Passed him out. That's John. He was holy, righteous, lived before him, and loved God with all of his heart, his soul, his mind. And somehow, somewhere, somebody has painted a picture, especially in the American church, especially, that when we see him, he's gonna be like, hey, brother, I'm so excited that you're here. You made it. That's not the Bible. Oh, my God. He says to the church of Laodicea, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm and neither cold, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This is Jesus. This is the one, this is the one, this is the lamb that was slain. This is, the, this is the one that broke the power of sin, self-righteousness, he broke it. This is our king. One day you're going to meet him. You're going to encounter this king of glory. People are like, well, I have a love relationship with Jesus. I, I love him so much. Yet we continue in sin. The Bible says that's not the truth. The Bible says that you're wavering and double-minded. I don't know if you guys read this. It's, it's real. He, he says this in 2 Timothy. All of those that desire all of those that name the name of the Lord must, not should, not can, not ought to. They really ought to think about it. That's not what he says. All of those that name the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. 
must, not should, not kind of, must. There has to be a difference between you and the world. There has to be a difference between you and your neighbor. Loving your neighbor isn't acting like your neighbor. Loving your neighbor isn't acting like your neighbor. Loving your neighbor is acting like the person God created you to act like. This is real. Look, this is crazy. This is, this is Jesus, okay? He's the one. I didn't come up with this. This is amazing. He says, because you say I am rich and become wealthy and have need of nothing, you do not know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I salve to anoint your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Sometimes we are so focused on God's love that we forget that he likes to discipline. And sometimes we've ignored discipline for so long, we've seared our conscience, we say that grace and God and God is love and he's full of grace and mercy, he is. And we've compromised the severity of God for the love of God. People are like, I don't really wanna hear this. Look, I've got enough. Look, you don't understand. Like, everything's about to change. Like, wrong person, I, I didn't want them in office. And now, like all this, I needed a message of hope and you're just dragging me down, bro. You're just a bummer, you're a buzzkill. I just heard that in my heart. That there are people here and people watching online they're like, you know, we don't, I don't need this. There's enough turmoil, okay? Let, tell me something happy. I will. I am, I'm going to share with you the only way for you to avoid hell, hell and condemnation eternally. I am telling you the truth about how to avoid being thrown into a pit. You're like, no, you don't get it, dude. I've been, my name is written in the book. You can't do anything. God says, oh my gosh, so many different places. He said, I will blot their name out of the book. This is no joke. People are like, no, once you're saved, you can't, like no one can mess with that. Do you think that you get saved and you can live like hell and still make it? Are we, are we joking? Do you think that when you get born, look, that, no, oh wow, he's messing with my theology. I don't care about your theology. I care about Jesus. No, 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 you're not after giving him a reward for his suffering, you're after receiving your reward here. We live in the world and we receive praise from the world and we receive petting and stroking from the world and all of a sudden, like I feel good, things are good, I'm having a great day, okay, don't mess with my, mess, don't mess with my, my stuff. I don't mess with my stuff because look, I'm done with people messing with my stuff. I just, I just wanna be free, I wanna have joy. You think the joy of the Lord comes because of stuff? Do you think the joy of the Lord comes because your ducks are in a row? Do you think the joy of the Lord comes because you didn't have any problems, no one cuts you off on your way to work? Are we kidding? My Bible doesn't teach that. This isn't in here at all. It's not. Well, I wanna, like, listen to this, this is absolutely crazy. He says, those whom I love I reprove and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent. When you stand before him, there will be no repentance. When you stand before God on that day, you will not be able to repent. It's over. Do you understand that it's over? And we are closer to that day right now than ever before. And when you stand before him, you won't be able to say, Lord, forgive me. God is real. He's not just love. He's severe and he's a judge. He's a judge. Like you wouldn't just expect to go to a courtroom 
And, and all of a sudden, you've got this mass murderer that's on trial, and, and one of the people that he's taken out is one of your family members. They finally caught him. Years and years later, they caught this guy. They caught him. I'm going to get mine. Because it's personal. It's our family, or it's somebody close to us. And this guy, I'm going to go to court, watch this guy sentenced, man. So that's in the world. That's just the world. And, and I get it, the sentiment, the, the sadness, because somebody stole, killed, destroyed. Somebody did it. And I'm not saying it's right, it's wrong. But imagine that judge that you are holding on to, to, to his rule over this guy for, for your case to be completely, ex you know what I'm saying? Imagine that judge looking at the criminal. Uh, you have all these eyewitnesses and a couple of eyewitnesses were rescued before they were murdered because they were about to be killed and they busted in and they rescued him. They're testifying in front of everybody what he was going to do as well as all the bodies that have been discovered. All the missing people. And the judge looks at the guy after all the evidence is in and says, you know what? I don't find him guilty. Yeah, you would lose your mind. Yet we think that God should act that way with us. Are you kidding? He's a judge. He's our father, but he's a judge. He is good, but he's severe. Justice. Justice. We think, you know what? God understands. I mean, he understands me. I mean... He gets it. I mean, he knows I can't stop this porn thing. He knows, he knows. I mean, he, he's okay because he, he deals with it. Like, he understands that sometimes I cuss a little. People have put out t-shirts that say, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. Wow, that's a great message. Tell me how that's gonna fly when you cuss a little before the Lord. Tell me. It's because you don't love God. People are angry right now in here. Leave. I'm not keeping you here and I'm not upset. I love you. I'm not, I'm not gonna water this down. I am so convicted right now. God says you've been far too lenient to me. I'm like, where, what, how, are you, what? And he shook me to the core this afternoon. You've been far too lenient. You've been, you've been far too chilled out. He said, I want you to be my voice. Would you be? I said, Lord, you tell me and I'll share it. Revelation 6, verse 12. I looked when he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree cast its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll. Then it rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man. We're talking about all of those in power all of the most amazing people, the leaders, the rulers that think that they got it all figured out, the ones that want to be in control. I am. Oh no. Your little I am has nothing to do with he is. Oh, I promise, man. They said to the mountains and to the rocks, they spoke to the mountains and to the rocks. Like, this is crazy. The kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And as they're hiding and as they're hidden, they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us. Do you understand? There be a time on this earth where you can't even escape by death.
people think that the man, rocks fall on us, mountains fall on us. The, the great wrath of the, of the king of glory is today. It's now. It's coming, guys. People are like, well, I don't believe in that. Go ahead, fairy tale. Think it's not. Oh, I'm, I promise. It's, it, it doesn't matter what you think or what you say. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. The question is, what team are you on? Because the team that you're on determines everything. The life that you live, the words that you say. This is a big deal, way bigger than you think. Because if what happens stands, we've just shortened the time for this to all implement. Oh no, I'm not kidding. America's in trouble, buddy. In trouble because the church has lost her voice. This isn't just for pastors and preachers. This is for saints. Pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists are for the equipping of the saints for the works of ministry. God doesn't see you as just a sinner. He sees you as one that has died to sin and is alive unto righteousness. He sees you as one that's not gonna continue in that route because that man died. He sees you that way. But if you don't see yourself the way that he sees you, you will continue to live that world and you will try to explain away why it's okay for you to live there, why it's okay for you to remain there. And I'm promising you, that is not a safe place to be. A safe place is not a place of sin. It's not a place of hidden sin. It's not a place of lust. It's not a place of immorality. Immorality is no place to hide. I promise you, it's no place to hide. In Revelation 19, it says this. Let us rejoice in verse seven. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And the bride, who is the bride? We are the bride. Let me ask you this. Do you think that the Lord makes you ready? Or do you think that you have the duty out of love to make yourself ready? The marriage of the Lamb has come. And behold, the bride has made herself ready. That's scripture, that's the word. Well, that's works, I mean, I can't just get ready by works, no, but you can live in conviction. And you can wear the right garment. You can be robed with righteousness. You can be clothed with what God paid a price for you to be clothed with. And don't take off that garment, no matter what you do. The bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. That is the righteous acts of the saints. That's not the, the righteous confession. Mm. That's not the righteous confession of the saints. It's the righteous acts. Acts are works. Works, you're not saved by them. Grace saved you, but you will be judged by your works. But like, wait a minute, I thought, I thought I wouldn't be judged. Oh, no, no, no. You're gonna stand before the Lord and you'll be judged for all the deeds done in the body. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10, says that our ambition, our ambition, our number one ambition is this, to live a life pleasing to the Lord, here and there. How can I have my life be pleasing there? By how you live here. If you can't have this, you'll never have this. You do not want to face God with sin in your life. Like, wait a minute, you're, you are twisting the gospel. No, I'm reading it to you. I'm reading it to you. And I saw heaven open, verse 11. And behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head were many diadems. 
and his, on his and and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Yeah. Revelation twenty. You guys, all right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, and those whose presence earth and heaven fled away. <laughs> and no, name, no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. I don't know if you ever read this, that's intense. Wait a minute, God, I was saved by grace. Chill. You will not tell God to chill. I want you to know something. Listen to me very, very carefully. When you get there, and stand before God. And your wife has been going after the Lord, praying for you the whole time. And you thought it's okay, because I'm good. My wife loves God. I tell people, Jesus loves you. Oh, my grandma's a Christian. I hear about this all the time. Your grandma won't be your great defender. Oh, I'm not kidding you. See, when you stand before the Lord, no one will be your defender. No one will be your lawyer. Your wife won't be able to say, he's a good man. If you don't mind, he's a good man. Please let him in. That's not how this works. You won't be judged for her good deeds. I don't know. And if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, verses seven and eight. He who overcomes will inherit these things. I will be his God and he will be my son. Listen to this. But the cowardly and unbelieving. See, you might say, well, I'm not afraid. And you have no idea who God is. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, you will be cowardly on that day. The cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the immoral and the immoral persons and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all the liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'm gonna read the list again. It's pretty intense. Righteousness solves everyone. First love and never leaving it and falling into that right there and saying, you know what, God? I'm done. Cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, immoral persons, sorcerers, idolaters, liars. That's not my list. I didn't come up with that. I'm not preaching legalism here, guys. I'm preaching the reality of the times that we're in right now. The Bible says come out and, and be separate. The Bible doesn't say be like. The Bible says come out and be separate. Separate yourself. The Bible says don't live as perverse and corrupt, but it says live a life worthy of the call. It says separate yourself in your heart. That doesn't mean you can't hang with people, but if you have a basket on your head, it's a very dangerous place to hang when you're hanging with people that are out, that are disgruntled. You have the answer. The answer is Jesus. But your fully surrendered life is the only way in. You can be in the midst of conversations that are going to hell quickly. You can hear it in their voice. You can hear it in their language. God is looking for you to actually have a voice. But the voice of truth has been calling out your name for some time. You might have answered the call 20 years ago. You might have got born again 20 years ago, but God is not expecting you to remain the same way that you came in. Grace 
takes you and receives you. No, it's not by works that we're saved. You can't work your way to God. God made his way to you through the womb of a woman, through Jesus Christ that was born. Jesus lived a holy, perfect life and died a horrible sinner's death. Sin was laid upon him so that it would no longer rule and reign in your heart and in your soul. Ever again, in any way, shape, or form. And if sin tries to come, nor, tries to come near you, Look, sin is crouching at your door. It's crouching at your door. If Jesus is on the inside, it can't come in. If he's on the inside, he stands at the door inside. That's not coming in. You've separated yourself. You've come out. You are a peculiar person. Oh my. Revelation 22. Mm. Behold, verse 12, I am coming quickly. This was written oh, a bit ago. And people are like, well, if he said he's coming quickly, I mean, how, how quickly is he coming? Look around you at the sign of the times, buddy. Look and see. Read the Bible and ask the Lord, how soon are you coming? It will put a fear of God inside of you that the fear of man will never ever have you bow to it again. See, what we've done is we've trying to, we're trying to so much, we're trying to so much maintain cultural relevance and making sure that, that we don't like step outside of culture because we don't want to violate culture. We've become so culturally relevant, culturally relevant, and we've sacrificed truth on that altar. We've sacrificed truth on the altar of trying to be culturally relevant. Trying to fit in has become the norm instead of stand out. Trying to fit in and look like everybody and please everybody and do the same things and, man, I'm gonna lose all my friends. Okay, one day when you stand before the Lord and they don't know him, they're lost forever. If you're gonna have friends that aren't saved, why don't you act saved? If you're gonna have friends that are of the world, then why don't you look more like Jesus so that they wanna come out? We can't keep making decisions that the world would make. We can't make a decision like our atheist neighbor would, but us having the name of Jesus. So if I make a decision like my atheist neighbor would, but I have the name of Jesus, what I've done is I'm actually practicing practical atheism. What's the difference between you and them? I'm not talking about being goody two-shoes. Mr. Holier Than Thou. No, no, no. This isn't about beating people down and making yourself look up. This is about coming under people saying, there's a better way. There is a way of joy. There is a way of passion. There is a way of love that you know not of. Man, in Peter it says, man, be ready to give an account. First Peter 3.15, be ready to give an account when people ask you about the joy that you carry, about this hope that's in you. How would people ask you about this hope that is in you if you're living hopeless? This message isn't to bring hopelessness on you. The message of the gospel is to bring conviction upon you. Why? Because when conviction upon you comes, Grace meets conviction, and change is the answer. Transformation. Look, any gospel message that comes to you that doesn't, that has grace in it, that doesn't promote radical transformation is demonic in nature. God will take you just the way you are, but the gospel demands change, and he doesn't expect you to stay there. Guys, we're supposed to grow up into him. 
the fivefold gift is to grow up so that the whole body of Christ being trained and equipped, we all come up to the mind of Christ. The, the gospel is transformation, is transformation of everything. Salvation comes inside of you when you get born again. It comes inside of you, but salvation works itself out through your members with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling, not being afraid of God. This message isn't I'm afraid of God. This message is conviction so that you actually become afraid of sin. When you're convicted of righteousness, you fear sin. <laughs> what is it like to fear sin? Something comes near you, oh my gosh, no way. And it can't have dominion over you. <laughs> Guys, fear shall no longer have dominion over you. Righteousness will have dominion inside of you. The decisions you make will be the byproduct of righteousness. Your right standing with the Lord. And when you have right standing with the Lord and you're convicted by that, the last thing you want to do is sin and get away with it. Immorality and idolatry has, has, has slept with the church, man. Another great leader of the church, shoo, another one, shoo, another one, shoo, taken out, picked off by the enemy, man. Picked off, has taken the bait of Satan Why would you want to taste that when Jesus tastes so good? He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be his disciple. What does that mean? It means that there's absolutely nothing else that can satisfy what you truly long for except for Jesus. There's nothing else that actually will help you. Nothing else will actually help you grow thereby. There's no other way except Jesus. There's no other way except Jesus. Behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to render to each man according to what he has done. This is the whole Bible. Guys, this is the Bible that we all say we believe. Somehow, somewhere, we've, we've left this, this, this life of, it was works driven and constantly works and we cease from our works and we enter into his rest, but really we haven't entered into rest. We, we still worry and fear, and, but rest is righteousness because when you get in there, all of a sudden, you can seriously cease from trying to work yourself in. Because there's no way. So you cease from it. You take his yoke upon you. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And you find rest for your soul. So somewhere along the line, especially in America, people have, have equated grace with no longer having to work and the church has become lazy and lackadaisical in her approach to growing up into God. And what we've done is we've allowed pastors to feed us and we sit there sucking on a pacifier yeah. instead of drinking milk and eating meat. And then we wonder why we're not growing and we wonder why sin is such a manifested thing in our lives. And we think that when we get to heaven, we're finally gonna be free from that. Jesus didn't pay a price to set you free when you die. And if that's true, then death has become your savior. Death is not your savior. Jesus is your savior. Why wait to get to heaven to be free when Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free. The day that you got saved, freedom hit you. Freedom broke your shackles. Freedom took off your blinders. Freedom took out your earplugs. Freedom did. Freedom did. Unrecognized freedom is still bondage. Unrealized freedom is still bondage. And we 
having exited slavery, entered back into slavery without even seeing it. And we sit inside of a prison with vapor walls. Jesus paid more of a price than just to give you freedom when you get to heaven. No, it's not just a get out of hell free card. It's a get the hell out of you free card. This message has more hope in it than you can ever imagine. Because this message can set you free from the bondage of you. It's the bondage of the way that seems right to a man. It leads to destruction. People are like, well, yeah, well, of course it just takes you off course. No, you living for you, standing for, for him, is eternal destruction. You living for you now, living a life that's pleasing to you here, but not pleasing to the Lord, means you stand before the Lord having nothing pleasing at all, except for a confession of faith when you were 12. <laughs> wow. There's no condemnation in this thing, man. There's none. I am not condemning anybody. You're condemning your own self. The decisions that you make will produce freedom or condemnation. You don't have to do this thing alone. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Ever. That whole masturbation thing and that whole fantasy realm that people don't like to talk about is so cut off when you realize his eyes are looking out through yours. That immorality thing that people are like, well, just, man, I just can't believe I fell. It's not a fall. Immorality is not a fall. You don't fall into a woman. Sorry. Oh my gosh. That's not God. No one fall. We've swept this thing under the carpet. Oh my gosh, they fall. They fell. How are we gonna restore them now? They fell. Let's put it under the carpet. Hope it, hope it never happens again. Let's just, I mean, never gonna happen again. We've watered this thing down. It's time we raise the bar. It's time we raise the standards. Where's my worship? Is my worship team anywhere? Maybe. <laughs> Gosh. I, I hear the keys, they're eternal. So, I love it. Oh my God, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, you don't fall into a woman, buddy. Such trash. We focus so much on restoration. How do we restore? How do we restore? What do we do to restore them? And I'm not about not restoring somebody. I'm not. But we've not gone after the fear of the Lord, and that's the reason why we have to try to restore so many people. We haven't walked or had the fear of the Lord to where we have such a burning heart for the Lord inside that nothing else is acceptable. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about like legalism here, man. I didn't never know legal, I didn't know what legalism was. When I got saved, I was so in love with Jesus. I was just crazy. And all the people that I had hurt, and man, I was just like, man, one day, and I had to walk this out. And I mean, I devastated people. I had to walk it out. I had to walk it out. I knew that me trying to sell my fruit wasn't gonna work. I knew that me walking this out and allowing them to pick it was the only way it was gonna happen. And I'm not perfect. I'm not. But he is. 
He is. You guys okay? Yes. This is really good. I feel, I feel so good inside. Oh my gosh. Listen to this list again. Cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, immoral, sorcerers, idolatry, liars. If the shoe fits, you better get rid of it. They're not the shoes that he gave you. They're the wrong ones that you put on. It's amazing that they can slip over the gospel of peace shoes that he gave you. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who wash the robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life. They may enter by the gates into the city. Outside of the gates are dogs and sorcerers and immoral persons and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. That's not my list, that's his. It's not okay to have any of that stuff in your life. It's not okay to have anything but God be first. First love is where we must return. We must return. Jesus told the only one that only got a little bit of rebuke and it was the church at Ephesus. He said to the church at Ephesus, I have this against you. First he said, you guys have done amazing here and here and here and here, so good but I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen. Repent and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. You know what that means? God is speaking to us, and what he's saying is that we have left our first love. Yeah, but he's talking to the church in Ephesus. No, 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 see, leaving your first love opens the door for everything else. Giving our hearts to first love, that's where it's at. So if that's you, you should probably come up here. If you feel in your heart that you've walked away from first love, I say, I say we go after heaven a little bit. I'm not speaking to you about any of these things. I'm talking about all of what I shared. If this stuff is in your life and you wanna be free from it, please run forward. Please don't wait, please. You guys are about to see the youth run past you if you're not careful. Because they're willing to run and get free quickly. They're willing to run and get free quickly. They're not, they're not gonna sit there and let their whole life be jacked up. No, they're gonna burn with fire. I'm not kidding. They're gonna burn with a living flame. And it's gonna be amazing. We say we want revival. We say we want it. I say before we have revival, we need to be awakened. I say before we have revival, we need to be awakened. I say the Lord right now is waking up a sleeping giant right now. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, bring great conviction. Bring great conviction. 
End the confusion with great conviction. End the confusion with great conviction. Lord, we say yes, we want it all. We want it all, we want it all. We want to live our lives pleasing here so that when we stand before you, we're pleasing there. We are letting go of immorality. We're letting go of lying. We're letting go of idolatry. We're letting go of all of that stuff that so easily ensnares us. We want to be a people coming out, being separate. We want to raise the bar. We want to hold the beacon of light. We want to shine. We want to shine. We want to be people on fire so that people don't have to spend eternity in fire. We want to burn. We want to run. We will not live in compromise. We will not walk in fear. We will not live in sin. We will not be ensnared by what we've been set free from. Jesus, the plumb line has been drawn. The plumb line. The plumb line for this house, the plumb line for your church has been drawn. A line in the sand has been drawn. There's no going back. If none go with me, I'm going. That's what you need to say in your heart. If nobody runs with you, you're going. If nobody runs with you, you're going anyway. If none go with you, you're running anyway. People are like, this guy's a little emotional. No, I'm not. I'm burning. This is called passion. I was set free from sin 16 years ago. I'm not about to continue in it right now. I was set free from sin. Set free from a life of sin. Set free from drugs, set free from porn, set free from anger, set free from hatred. I'm not about to bring that thing back into my life. God wants us to raise the bar. He wants us to raise the standard to normal. What does it look like to be normal, to be a burning one? To have a hearts that are on fire, blazing with the glory of a king in this world, but not of it, separated separated in our hearts through faith, knowing that one day we're going to answer for our deeds. One day we're going to stand before the judge of all the earth. We wouldn't expect a normal or 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 a judge here in America to make an unrighteous decision. We wouldn't. How dare we think God will. Jesus said the ruler of this world has been judged. He was judged so that you didn't have to be, but you will be judged for following the one that has been judged. Jesus, we ask you right now, come. Holy Spirit, bring your fire, bring your flame, bring your reality of repentance. Lord, we repent. Lord, I repent for being lenient. I repent. I repent for not burning more. I repent for not being more bold. I repent for not taking more action. I repent for not doing more to raise the standard, Lord. I repent for walking in any way less than what Jesus has created me to walk. I repent for not being more intimate with you. This isn't yours, this is my repentance. (laughs) I repent for not listening more to hear your voice. I repent for not desiring more to hear your voice. I repent for minutes lost. God, you've asked us to redeem the time for the days are evil. God, I repent for not seeking you more. I repent for looking at the world 
in any way outside of your eyes for the world. God, I repent for eating when I should have been fasting. Help. Help. Help me raise the standard. God, use me or kill me. God, enforce the scripture to live as Christ and to die as gain. Pour out your heart to God of what you're up here for. Just pour out your heart to God of what you're even up here for. Come on, use your voice. Who cares who hears you? Who cares who hears you? Pour out your heart to the Father. Who cares who hears you? Who cares? It's you and the Lord. Just use your voice. Use your voice. Use your voice. Use up your voice. Come on, use your voice. Pour out your heart. You and the Father. You and the Father. You and the Father. Pour out your heart. Who cares who hears you? Who cares? Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Don't be afraid. Lift your voice. Get clean. Lift your voice. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Mark people. 